is king of the universe. God is king. He loves every one of us. Welcome to the TOG Insider. King of the universe. Brought to you by the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ in Philadelphia. In each Insider program, we will take you behind the scenes of the truth of God. We'll visit our temples and the people that make the truth of God happen. Greetings, everyone. Once again, we'd like to welcome you to this another edition of the Truth of God Insider. Uh, my name is Brother Dan Thompson. I'm the media director of the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ. As you know, the Truth of God uh, Insider is designed to give you a little bit more insight in terms of what's happening behind the scenes at the First Church of Our Lord Jesus Christ, and that includes meeting some of the personalities that you have seen on the Truth of God program from time to time. Now today, we do have a very special guest for you, a very special guest for you. Uh, his name is Minister Steve Williams, and he is the reader for Pastor Gino Jennings. Greetings, Brother Steve. Greetings, Brother Dan. I'm glad to be here on this afternoon. Yeah, glad to uh, welcome you to this uh, The Truth of God Insider. Um, introduced you as the reader, as most people will know you as. And yes, um, we want to uh, talk to you a little bit to get to know you a little bit better. Okay. Uh, most people that have seen you, they've just simply seen you as the reader for Pastor Jennings. Right. Um, but I, I wanted to uh, sort of question you a little bit and uh, ask you a little bit more about yourself. Right. Um, one of the things Pastor does, he, he refers to you as script. Yes, sir. You know, and uh, most people may wonder, why does he do that? Or sometimes he may refer to you as soup. Yes, sir. So it's two different titles that he's given you, right? Can right. you give us a sense of where those titles came from? Okay, well, I'm going to start off with the title uh, Soup. Soup, okay. That came about when, um, you know, because me and him, we grew up together. Mm -hmm. um, on the same block, uh, the name of the uh, block was called Jerome Street mm -hmm. in the Hunting Park section of Philadelphia. Mm -hmm. And uh, we used to play football together. Mm -hmm. And uh, I got that name because I was able to catch the balls. I played wide receiver. Mm -hmm. And I was able to catch the ball, and people would try to tackle me. Mm -hmm. And they had such a hard time tackling me. Now, you see as thin as I am. <laughs> I was thinner then. Okay, and I would catch the ball, and when people would try to tackle me, I would, like, somehow I would evade their tackles. Mm -hmm. And uh, it was like... It's, it's a super experience. <laughs> you had to see it. <laughs> so that's how uh, I, got, I got that name, Sue. Yeah, yeah. That's why he called me that. And also for, for the, uh, uh, the other title, Script, mm -hmm. it's because God blessed me yeah. through his praying yeah. and gave me the ability to be able to find the scriptures. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that's yeah. one talent that I'm so thankful for. And... Um, yeah. Wherever he goes, wherever God leads him to preach, God yeah. leads me in the same way. Yeah. Yeah. And the scriptures, I'm able to find them and yeah. get them and, you know, read what yeah. he's preaching yeah, it's about. Really, it's really something to, to behold, but uh, we'll, we'll get to that yeah, a little, okay. bit, a little okay. bit later on. But um, uh, tell, tell us about the very first time you met Pastor Jennings. Was it in high school? Was it in grade school? Uh, Do you remember? Okay, so we grew up together. Um, we used to play various games mm -hmm. together. One of the main things that we really did, though, was racing. Racing, yeah. We would race up yeah. and down the street. So you were maybe six or seven years um, old? No, we were older than that. Okay. Um, maybe 14, 15, 15. Okay. but not. Yeah. Yeah. And we, I would always challenge him. Mm -hmm to races because I thought I was faster than he was. Yeah. <laughs> Always challenge him, all the time, all the time. And this one particular time, yeah. I remember in particular, yeah. um, he just got off his job. Mm -hmm. He was coming home from work. And when he turned the corner and I saw him, yeah. I challenged him uh -huh. almost as soon as I saw him. <laughs> you know, I was bragging and all, I'm going to beat you this time and whatnot. Mm -hmm. So we had our race mm -hmm. and he Still beat me. I'm like, how <laughs> in the world did you beat me? You just got off work. Mm -hmm. And he still beat me. So mm -hmm. I was always, even though he would beat me, I kept challenging him, kept challenging him. Yeah. You know, so that was one of our favorite, um, that was one of our favorite pastimes because 
we would get together, we would race so much, mm -hmm. and it would be so exciting just between the two of us, mm -hmm. until other people on the block, they wanted to race. <laughs> and for those that don't know Jerome Street, it is an extremely long block. We mm -hmm. would race from corner to corner, mm -hmm. from corner to corner. Mm -hmm. So we had a lot of fun when oh, we did that fun, activity. Yeah, yeah, a lot of fun, yeah, yeah. a lot of fun. Yeah. If, we, if we turn to the religious side of things, um, can, you, can you remember, well, tell us when were you baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus? Okay, so yeah. to set that up. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, as mm. the audience may well know by now, yeah. and if they don't know, they will know, I was a three God man. Yeah. <laughs> uh, I was into the Trinity, and I loved the Trinity with all my heart. And, yeah. You know, I just believed in it. Mm. And um, I believed in it so much so until I prayed one night, one day. And I told Jesus that I don't want to talk to you. Mm. I want to talk to your father. Because the problem that I was dealing with, I didn't believe Jesus could handle it. Mm. I had to take it to the, you know, to the Almighty, <laughs> not knowing that Jesus is the Almighty. <laughs> so, but that, I'm just setting it up to let you know how much I believed yeah. in the Trinity. Yeah. So one day uh, I, went to, I went up on um, Pastor's porch. We were, he, at that time, he was living still on Jerome Street. Mm -hmm. um, and I went up to him and I asked him, he was sitting down, I was asking him a question. I asked him, well, no, 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 he asked me, he asked me who was coming back for me. Mm -hmm. And I said, I believe I said that Jesus was coming back for me or Jesus the Lord was coming back. And I asked him, well, who's coming back for you? Mm -hmm. And he said, Jesus Christ, God Almighty. Mm -hmm. And I never heard Jesus and the titles God Almighty in the same sentence. Mm. And that's the thing that knocked me off my spiritual foundation about the Trinity. It mm -hmm. completely knocked me off so much so until I felt dizzy <laughs> because <laughs> I never heard that statement yeah. before. Yeah. And when I went off the porch, I was still, it was like I was in a daze. I was mm. dizzy. Mm. And he, you know, he, taught, he told me about the baptism in the name of Jesus Christ and whatnot. Mm. And then after that, um, not long after that, I was baptized in water. Okay, was this Pastor Jennings baptized? In the name of Jesus Christ. So at that time, we were at uh, another church. Mm -hmm. We were on 24th Street yeah. uh, in the Holy Temple. And I believe it was, oh man, I forgot the minister's name that actually baptized me the first time. Right. Mm -hmm. But after that, though, mm -hmm. Pastor Jennings baptized Baptizer, me over. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. And I received it again after so, repentance. Wonderful, right. wonderful. Yeah. So if we talk about your religious upbringing then, um, was this because of the person who raised you or, and, or, or the religious preachers you were around at the time? Well, that's a story all, <laughs> all to itself. Um, yeah. So my mother, surprisingly, now my mother was baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. And at one point she did have the Holy Ghost speaking in tongues. Mm. And, you know, but... She, she used to go to this other church. Uh, the name of the church was Deliverance, mm -hmm. Deliverance Evangelistic Church. Mm -hmm. She had been to Holy Temple before, but uh, she was, you could almost say, a member of, of that church. Mm -hmm. And my grandmother, she uh, sometime back had been with Bishop S.C. Johnson, mm -hmm. and, but she left the church, and, mm -hmm. you know. So we were going to the false churches. Mm -hmm. And um, because of me being around the false churches and believing in that so much, mm -hmm. and also we would visit other churches, mm -hmm. I got mm -hmm. tied up in the false prophets. A.A. <laughs> um, mm -hmm. a. Allen, mm -hmm. uh, so-called Reverend Ike, mm -hmm. um, uh, Bishop, I guess it was a bishop, I'm not sure what title he had, but I'll say Bishop Shambach. Shambach. Um, mm -hmm. Oh, man. Uh, and I, you know, mm -hmm. Pastor Smith mm -hmm. uh, at Deliverance, um, I was in love with these people. <laughs> I love these people. Mm -hmm. And because of that, that had an influence over my beliefs. Mm -hmm. And what they taught, I believed it. Mm -hmm. You know, mm -hmm. uh, the teaching about one God, I was never taught that. I didn't hear one God teaching until Pastor Jennings, mm -hmm. you know. Uh, many things I just didn't know, and I was sincere about my belief, mm -hmm. but there were so many things I didn't know. Mm -hmm. and I was in such darkness, and even though I was in that type of darkness, 
God still blessed me and filled me with the Holy Ghost. That's wonderful. Speaking in tongues that the wonderful. Spirit of God gives utterance. That's wonderful. And um, it took a while for me to come out of those beliefs because I wasn't taught the right way. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So after that question that Pastor Jennings asked me about who was coming back for me, after that, that started the spiritual ball rolling mm -hmm. in the right direction. Mm -hmm. And after he told me about Jesus Christ being God and there's one God, mm -hmm. then um, after that, it was like the Lord took me on a spiritual tour through the scriptures. Mm -hmm. Every scripture. Hallelujah! Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! Mm -hmm. Hallelujah! Mm -hmm. Every scripture mm -hmm. the Lord would take me to. Mm -hmm. And had to deal with one God. Mm -hmm. And then after that, mm -hmm. when I put the Bible down, mm -hmm. I was convinced I knew it was one, one God. God. I knew it was one God. Yeah. And yeah. from that day forward, nobody can tell me different. Mm. I believe it with all my heart. Yeah. Nobody can tell me. It's different. one God. I know it's one God. And there's only one. And I know the name of the one God. That's wonderful. That's wonderful. So God brought me from a long way. From a long way. Uh, a long to come way. from a belief in more than one God to the belief in the one God is, is a long journey. Isn't yes. It? yes. So let, let's go back to the time when Pastor Jennings actually asked you that question about the one God. And you're beginning to look at the scriptures differently. Right. Um, Tell us at what point in time Pastor began to describe to you about the vision that God gave him, because I believe you went to 24th Street, you left the right. churches where you were. Right. And so when did you start going to 24th Street then? 24th Street being the temple, it's called Holy Temple. Holy Temple. Yeah. I believe it was, I want to say 1982. It was either mm -hmm. 1982. Mm -hmm. Oh man, 84, it's like I got three different dates in yeah. mind, three different years. Yeah. It might have been 84 or 82. Yeah, probably 82 86. because it Pastor Jennings been, began his ministry in 84. In 84. Okay, right. so it probably was eight. Yeah, because I went to Holy Temple for two years. Yeah, yeah. So about two years. So I believe it was in 1982. 1982. But he, he had, we had talked, he had told me about the visions mm -hmm. while at Holy Temple. So these, these talks started, mm. wow. Mm. Wow, maybe 82. Because he'd been talking to me all along yeah. and telling me about the visions that God had showed him and, mm. you know, the churches and um, mm. the broadcast and the traveling, mm. all of that way before anything, uh, mm. anything occurred. He wasn't even pastoring then. He wasn't even pastoring then. Mm. And, um, you know, I, I, I couldn't see what he was talking about, <laughs> but I believed it. Yeah. I really believed what he was saying. Yeah. And when we were in Holy Temple, I'm like, how in the world is this going to occur? Because we were in spiritual turmoil. Mm. You know, what took place at Holy Temple was enough to make a, a young person backslide easy. Mm. But because Pastor was teaching me at the time mm -hmm. while in Holy Temple, mm -hmm. he was teaching me while I was at Holy Temple. Mm -hmm. Mm. You know, that's what blessed me to hold on, yeah. hold on to God and not let go. Mm. And uh, mm. man, he would teach me we would be at his mother's and father's house. He would teach me every day. Mm. Um, Old Testament, New Testament, mm -hmm. uh, Jesus Christ being God and other topics and how to go to the Old Testament and the New Testament and certify, mm -hmm. you know, his, uh, yeah. you know, yeah. the, the uh, teachings. Mm. And um, when I look back on it now, I value that. Yeah. Yeah. I really value that yeah. because without that, I don't know where I would be at spiritually speaking. Yeah. If we go back to the Holy Temple at 24th Street, mm -hmm. um, who was the leader there? Okay, so we were under a man, and his name was um, mm -hmm. Hayward Hinton, mm -hmm. and uh, he called himself Apostle Hinton. Mm -hmm. So my first experience there, mm -hmm. when I first went, my first visit there, mm -hmm. um, you know, came into the church and all got seated and whatnot. And, mm -hmm. um, what well, we called him Apostle. Apostle Hinton started preaching. He started mm -hmm. preaching. Mm -hmm. Now, the strange thing is, I couldn't understand a word he <laughs> was saying. <laughs> and I'm like, that service after that, mm -hmm. I was done. I was mm -hmm. not coming back. Oh. Because only because I couldn't understand what he was saying. He mm -hmm. had a, you know, his English wasn't mm -hmm. that great, you know, when, at least when he was preaching. Yeah. So I was ready to go. But mm -hmm. Pastor, uh, he 
I, he talked to me and, you know, I mm. came back the next week, <laughs> you know, I, I didn't stop and I'm glad I didn't stop yeah. because if I had stopped from that first time, yeah. you may not, we may not yeah, be right. talking right. the way we are now. Yeah. Yeah. So. How did Pastor Jennings, from what I understand, he wasn't treated very well by oh, Bishop Clinton. Oh, man, Hutton. yeah. Describe, uh, describe some of that for us. Yeah, he was treated terribly. Um, it was with one particular service. This always this sticks out in my mind a lot mm -hmm. because he, um, him and Sister Darlene, mm -hmm. um, they were going to be married. Mm -hmm. And um, Apostle Hinton knew that. And he would, he told them in the congregation, mm -hmm. open. Mm -hmm. This is before the congregation. Mm -hmm. He said, I hope. You and Sister Darlene dropped dead mm. at the altar. Mm. And um, then he wanted everybody to say amen. The church was silent. Nobody said amen. Mm. So he said, well, if you don't say amen, I'll say amen. Amen. And he was around the church. Amen. Amen. And um, he said that more than one time. Mm. Um, there was another occasion where um, I believe... I don't know whether uh, Pastor Hinton had, had a dream. Um, I think he said he had a dream. And he said he, in a dream, was a uh, pastor and this other brother that uh, was with us, Brother Michael Ravenel. Mm -hmm. And he said that he took a pole. I don't know whether it was a lead pole, some type of pole or pipe or something, mm -hmm. lead pipe. And he said he, he beat them both. And I think he said he beat them to death in the dream. So, you know, this was just, that's just a few instances of mm -hmm. where speech was used mm -hmm. in such a negative manner that it was enough to drive you away from, from the church. Mm -hmm. It was enough to do it and to have you go back out in the world because mm -hmm. the speech was so harsh. Mm -hmm. And the thing about it is he meant the Hinton, Apostle Hinton meant what he was saying. Mm -hmm. He meant every word he was saying. And uh, it was just hurtful, yeah. Yeah. you know, hurtful to come to be in a place called church. Mm -hmm. And you're going to hear this type of speech. I hope mm -hmm. you drop dead at mm -hmm. the altar, mm -hmm. you know. And um, you're teenagers at this time. Uh, yeah, pastor was a teenager. I believe I was still, I believe I may have been in my 20s, mm -hmm. but I was young. I was still young. I was just starting, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. you know. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. It's just hurtful, hurtful. Um, so as time went on then, mm -hmm. you know, pastor obviously had the vision that God had given to him. Right. And there came a time, I believe, when people began to leave 24th Street and, you know. Yeah. Um, it had gotten down to the point because things were in such turmoil mm -hmm. that most of the people that were there, they, they left out. Mm. And it was only the pastor was still there preaching. Mm -hmm. um, I was still there. Mm -hmm. And um, his wife could be Sister Darlene. She was still there. Mm -hmm. So there were times where there was only three of us mm. at Sunday morning service. Mm. And Sister Darlene, she was still faithful. Mm -hmm. She would go from row to row mm -hmm. um, because the offering was supposed to be given. Mm -hmm. She acted like the building was full. Mm -hmm. She was stopping at each uh, aisle, mm -hmm. you know, so people can come up to give the offering. Now, nobody's there but me, him, and and her. But she was still faithful. Yeah, yeah. Pastor would still preach. He mm -hmm. would preach like the building was full. Mm -hmm. He would preach like the building was full. Mm -hmm. God blessed him to be faithful, even mm -hmm. though it was just, mm -hmm. at the time, it was only three of us. And that went on for a while, a little while. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, he didn't leave. Pastor mm -hmm. stayed right there until God spoke to him. Mm -hmm. And that particular day was time for him, for us yeah. to go. Yeah, you and, I, and I was going to say, yeah. I remember <laughs> that last service when we came out, uh -huh. I remember looking up in the sky <laughs> and thinking, what are we going to do? Yeah. You know? Yeah. And, but I'm glad that we were all able to hold on. <laughs> we were able to hold on yeah. through yeah. all of that. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, it takes, a, it takes a spirit of God to help you. Yeah, definitely. You're a young person not knowing that much, you know. And right. It's easy to be driven out of the church. So. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, well, well, tell us a little bit more about um, 
the exact beginning. Uh, so, Pastor left 24th Street and yourself, right. I believe in 19, probably 1984. Right, right. And May, May of some time. Do, you, do yeah. you remember exactly what happened there in the first service in the basement of the home of... So that very first Brother Jennings, service, um, as you said, was in May. Mm -hmm. um, I think I'm trying to get the amount of people that may have been there in that first service. Mm -hmm maybe 10 or 12, I believe he started out with. Mm -hmm. And it was in the home of his mother and father mm -hmm. down in the basement. Mm -hmm. And um, we had the service and uh, we continued to have services in the basement. Mm -hmm. And I had my mic at that time was hanging from the ceiling. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And I would read into the mic like I was reading to the entire world. <laughs> <laughs> and we was in the basement. <laughs> but I was so, just so ex excited. Excited. My, yeah. my zeal was here, it was yeah. past my head. Yeah. yeah. You know, and I was just so happy. You know, man, I was, I was, wow. Yeah. I was reading aloud. Reading aloud. And the uh, pastor was preaching. The spirit was with him. Mm -hmm. And many things went down. Mm good things mm. happen in the basement. Yeah. yeah. We had a lot, we had yeah. beautiful services. Yeah. Um, man, we had some wonderful times yeah. in yeah. the basement. Quite a lot. Quite, Quite a lot. A lot. A, lot. a lot. a lot happened. Yeah. I, I want to go back quickly to before you got to the basement. Okay. And um, oh, yeah. I think wow. Pastor in his, in his teaching sometimes refers to you sort of isolating yourself and him seeing you up in the window. Oh, yeah. Oh, my goodness. <laughs> um, more tell, days. Tell us about that. Tell us about that experience. More, more days of where I thought at that time, uh -huh. I thought <laughs> that I didn't have to go to church. Mm. You know, mm. I would be up in my room. Yeah. Uh, yeah. Just isolated. Yeah. Me and the Lord. I thought me and the Lord. Yeah. Uh, you know, mm. how that came about, I don't know. Mm. I don't know how I got to that type of thinking, mm -hmm. but I would like to tell people, um, because this is very important, do not isolate yourself away from right. other people right. in the church. Mm -hmm. That's not a safe place. Mm -hmm. That's mm -hmm. a bad place to be in mm -hmm. because Satan can come along. Mm -hmm. And s if you don't know the voice of God mm -hmm. and don't know the difference between God and Satan, mm -hmm. Satan can use his voice like God. Mm -hmm. And because you're isolated, yeah. now you think it's you and God, and it's not. It's you and the devil. Mm -hmm. You know, and you put yourself in a bad position. Mm -hmm. So one day um, I was up in my room, and uh, I believe it was lightning that day. Mm -hmm. and the pastor was, <laughs> and somehow he saw me. He was, I, I'm, I'm up, I believe I was on the third floor. Yeah. He saw me from the third floor. He was outside <laughs> and saw my silhouette. <laughs> <laughs> in the shade because right. I had the shade down. He yeah. saw my silhouette and this lightning coming and I'm up here in my room. room. And <laughs> it's just, I will tell people, don't do that. <laughs> don't do that. Come to church. Yeah. <laughs> like, like the Bible say, come right. to church. Right. Right. You know, right. so, uh, yeah. yeah, wow, I've had so many experiences. So many. Yeah. So yeah. many. That, that right there, we could talk all night no, just about my night. experience. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, well, let's, let's, let, let me ask you a little bit more about, um, again, your early experience with Pastor Jennings, right? So um, most, most people who see you and Pastor interacting during Pastor's preaching, his delivery, mm -hmm. um, they may get a sense of, of this having been rehearsed right. because the Holy Ghost makes it happen so seamlessly, right? And right. it flows just perfectly. Right. Um, I think Pastor mentioned him teaching you in the past. Right. Um, did he ever lay hands on you? Can you explain yeah. how that came yeah. about? And yeah. So that people understand that this, this is not something that's just um, a natural thing. It's it's the, the Holy Ghost is in this. Can right. Explain right. what happened with the laying on of hands. And, right. And so forth. So one day um, I had come off a prayer. Mm -hmm. This particular prayer, um, God had moved on mm -hmm. the pastor to lay hands on me. And at the time he was laying hands on me and saying what he was saying, he was asking God mm -hmm. to make my mind like his mind. Mm -hmm. 
So wherever he, God would lead him in the scriptures, mm -hmm. God would lead me in the same direction, in the same way. Mm -hmm. Now, at the time he was praying that prayer, I didn't believe God was going to do that. Mm -hmm. I didn't believe it. Mm -hmm. So while he was praying, I'm like, God ain't going to do this. God ain't going to do this. God ain't going to do this. <laughs> I didn't even believe what he was saying. Mm -hmm. And he believed his prayer, but I didn't believe it. So as time went along, God blessed my ability to read the scriptures. Mm. And I haven't been through the whole Bible. Mm. I haven't been read the scriptures from Genesis to uh, Revelation. Mm. I haven't been through the whole Bible. That may surprise some people. Yeah, that may surprise, that'll surprise a lot of people. Yeah. Yeah. Um, not only that, mm -hmm. the books, the uh, so-called new books. The Apocrypha. Yeah, they, they call the Apocrypha. Mm. I haven't been through all of that. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Yeah. But yeah. God had blessed me mm -hmm. to read those scriptures as if mm -hmm. I had read them all along. Mm. And it, it's, it amazes me. That's the blessing of the Lord. And I know it's the Lord. Mm -hmm. Because the way God blessed him to preach, mm -hmm. there's no way you could even keep up mm -hmm. with what he's preaching mm -hmm. because God is moving him at such a rapid pace. Yeah. Yeah. And God has given me the scriptures. The scriptures is coming. Mm. The scriptures is coming. Mm -hmm. And that's, you, you can't rehearse that. You can't rehearse it. You can't rehearse it yeah. because you don't know where he's... Okay, so there's something called off script. Yep. Yep. There's something called off script. Yep. yep. And a lot of times, pastors is going from scripture to scripture to scripture to scripture. Yeah. And the scriptures come to me. Yeah. Yeah. The scriptures yep. come to me. Yeah. And I know it's God. Yeah, that certainly is the spirit of God. Yes. But I think this question is an important question because mm -hmm. many people who see you and pastor actually doing, you know, preaching to, to many people who are ignorant of the working of the Holy Ghost. Right. They may think you sat down, you know, the day before and, and pastor gave you a topic to deal with and we're going to go to these scriptures. Right. It looks so fluid and so seamless right. that I, I think it's just important for you to let people know that when you come to service, you have no idea right, right. what Pastor Jenny is going to teach. Right, right. Uh, there is no rehearsal right. of, of preaching. No, you know, no. I'm persuaded that Pastor at times don't know what he's no. going to <laughs> preach. <laughs> right, right. Right. There, there have been times when Pastor may have gotten, mm -hmm. uh, may have preached, started off with a subject. Mm -hmm. And God will move him mm -hmm. from the, what he was talking about mm -hmm. to a totally different subject. Mm. And I'm sitting, you know, in the yeah. pulpit. Yeah. Mm. I notice God is switching. God is changing up. Mm -hmm. He's in one thing, but God is taking him to a whole nother topic. Yeah. And that's where, wherever God lands him at, yeah. that's what it is. Yeah. So, you know, to rehearse, you, you can't rehearse it. Um, now, along with that, with the being, having the ability to read, it also has changed my study habits, my reading habits, mm -hmm. where scriptures will come to me as I'm studying the mm -hmm. night before or whatever night, whatever, whatever night I'm, you know, I'm studying mm -hmm. and scriptures will come to me as I'm studying mm -hmm. and what I do is I write the scriptures out. I write, I write out a topic, mm -hmm. and then I write the scriptures out. Mm -hmm. Now, mm -hmm. he may not even go there. Mm -hmm. He may not even go there at all. Mm -hmm. There have been times I studied things out, and he didn't even touch it. Mm -hmm. So that's why I say there's no way you could rehearse no. this, this, uh, these services. This, because God is, how could you rehearse God? You can't. <laughs> No, you, you can't, can't write a script for God. You can't. You can. you God can. is God. Yeah, we just have to rely on the Spirit. Right. And I'm sure you've heard that advice from Pastor Jennings, even in teaching or preaching, you have to rely yeah. on the Holy Ghost to give you what's needed for the people at that time. Right, right. Yeah, but I think it's important for people to hear from you directly Yes. that there is no rehearsal of this. Right, right. It's simply at the moment what the Holy Ghost is saying it's, needs to be said. Right. Right. Yeah. Did yeah. this start actually, if because I think you were reading for Pastor James at Twenty Fourth Street. Yes. And do you notice the difference between then oh my and goodness. now? 
the, um, the difference is like night and day. Mm. Um, now, I would like to inform the people and let mm -hmm. them know mm -hmm. that after Pastor laid hands on me and prayed that prayer, mm -hmm. things didn't change like that. Right. It took time, time for things to develop. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, it took time for things to start to manifest themselves that that prayer mm -hmm was answered, yeah. but it just took time for the manifestation of the prayer to come to pass. Yeah, yeah. So it was, it, it was not an overnight, it yeah. was not an overnight yeah. thing, you know, yeah. it was just something I just jumped up and did that next week, yeah. you know, that next service. It took time for yeah. um, that type of ability to, um, to, develop, yeah. to develop in yeah. my life. Yeah. Yeah. And um, hmm. it, it's something that, it's something that only God can give. Hmm. You know, hmm. and now remind you, I didn't believe it was going to happen. Yeah. I didn't believe it. I did yeah. not believe it. Yeah. But because of his faith, he mm -hmm. coming to God, because mm -hmm. the scripture says he that cometh to God must believe that he is yeah. and that he is a rewarder to them that diligently seek him. Yeah. So he was the one coming to God. Yeah. I was just there. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I was there. But um, yeah, it's, it's a tremendous blessing. Yeah. Yeah. It's a tremendous blessing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, man, how does how does it actually how does it actually feel? I'm trying to oh, envision man. the question a, a viewer <laughs> may ask you. How does it actually feel <laughs> at Hallelujah. the time when <laughs> pastors teaching and <laughs> scriptures come to mind? Can you describe Hallelujah. that to somebody who may be ignorant of the movement of Hallelujah. God? So, yeah. <laughs> it, wow, it's, it's hard to describe hard to because describe. there's different ways yeah. that God have worked with me. Mm -hmm. um, well, I'm going to give you this one time, mm -hmm. um, in particular when we were in Jamaica, mm -hmm. and Pastor was up preaching, and he was preaching, I believe, from the Book of Jeremiah, mm -hmm. and I could hear mm -hmm. the Scripture in his head. Mm. Now, we're not talking about reading minds, because no. I'm not a mind reader. No. Right, right. I could hear the spirit. Hallelujah! Yeah. Mm. Hallelujah. It's talking to you. The spirit brought me the scripture mm. that was in his head, mm. and I heard the scripture mm. in his head. Mm. And after I heard it, mm -hmm. I've read it, mm -hmm. and a few seconds after that, that's where he went. He called for it. That's where he went. Mm. So, mm. it's hard to describe the Holy Ghost. Yeah, I understand. You know, it, it, because there's, it, God moves in different ways. Yeah. Um, and it, it, it's hard to describe. Now, one time, there was another case where we were at, I think we were at this church called Way of the Cross. That was, that was, that's going way, way, that's mm -hmm. going some time back. Mm -hmm. And I believe we were still going to Holy Temple. Mm -hmm. And he was up preaching, I believe we were, or, or we were out. Mm -hmm. Anyway, he was up preaching and say, I'm sitting here, and let's say he's out standing by the pew. Mm -hmm. And as he was walking toward me, mm -hmm. I could feel the power of God. Mm. Every step he would take, mm. it was like God would step. Mm. I could feel the power of God. Feel the presence. Cl the presence of God. Mm. Close and cl mm. <sighs> It's hard. <laughs> <laughs> that scripture in Genesis that speaks about how yes. God was in the garden. garden mm -hmm. And he, I heard he was, yeah. mm. yeah. hallelujah. He was walking in the garden. Hallelujah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Mm. Hallelujah. Yeah. In the cool of the day. Cool of the day, yeah. <laughs> yeah I understand. He <laughs> called for Adam. Yeah. Yeah. And he called. Right. He called for Adam. Yeah. And God was walking. Keep walking, yeah. And God was walking, walking. that. That day, day. Yeah. God let me feel that. Feel, that the, day. feel the same the, the presence. Sa the same presence. Mm. So, mm. It, it, God is God. Mm. And, 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 and it's, it's, it's difficult to put into words. I understand. You yeah. know, yeah. how. Man, I, I'm yeah. just thinking of another experience. Mm. Hallelujah! Hallelujah! Mm. Um, I'm trying to think whether I was reading, I believe I was reading, may have been reading. Mm -hmm. 
this, the, the, the scripture speaks about how mm -hmm. um, God would, uh, the Holy Ghost would be, it's like rivers of living water. water. Yeah. And it speaks about how it's in the belly. In the belly, Book of John. Yeah. I felt that. I felt the same thing. I felt the same, same, exact same, same thing, thing. Hmm. that this scripture describes mm -hmm. about the Holy Ghost. Mm -hmm. So, mm. God lives up to His word. No question. There's no question about that. Mm. And um, to have the scriptures come to your head. Mm -hmm. Scriptures that you're not thinking about. Yeah. That come. Just come right. Pastor have been up preaching. I've just been f r turning, turning the scriptures. Mm -hmm. And I'm like, man, this is exactly what he's saying. Mm -hmm. And I go and read it. <laughs> How could you rehearse that? that that's How? Hard. Yeah. Yeah. That's being led by God. That's the operation of the Spirit. That's the operation of the Spirit. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's so important, Steve, that I wanted to make sure that, you know, give you that chance to explain to people how God operates because the ability that God has given you is given to you for a purpose. Mm -hmm. And it's like a well-oiled machine when yourself and pastor get up there to deliver the message. Mm -hmm. um, it, it fits together so perfectly and people see it and they don't quite understand how something can work so seamlessly. Right, right. But as you explained, it's the movement of God. Yes, yes. Yeah, yeah. I want to go back to and ask you a little bit more about our early days when we started out and we went from, you know, 24th Street, as you were describing with Pastor Jennings, and Pastor began his ministry and went to, in his mother's home, father's home on, on Jerome on Street. Jerome Street. Mm -hmm. And then Pastor's father was there Right. And then from that time, we moved to Briar Road. Right. Uh, uh, tell me more about, from your perspective, the personality of Pastor's father, Bishop Jennings. Oh. Um, how, what was he like? Oh, Bishop Jennings, he was a beautiful man. Mm -hmm. um, in fact, I used to um, have Bible study with him mm -hmm. on, um, I believe it was on Wednesday nights, mm -hmm. where... Um, he, we would go into the Bible together, mm -hmm. and he would teach me mm -hmm. as well. You know, he would tell me, uh, teach me from the scriptures. And, mm -hmm. uh, oh, man, it was a beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. um, he was faithful. Mm -hmm. You know, he was a faithful man. And no matter how many people would come out to church that night, he was there. Yeah, yeah. When it was his night to preach, mm -hmm. because he, he worked two jobs. Yeah. But when it was his night to preach, he was he was he would be there. Mm. He was very faithful, mm. and um, his sound. Mm -hmm. uh, he was honest. Yeah. Um, mm -hmm. You know, I could see why the pastor, well, you know, often talks about him. Mm -hmm. You know, he was such a he was such a good figure. Mm -hmm. You know, to um, where you could really look up to him, mm -hmm. and um, which is something that a lot of especially young men don't have now. Mm -hmm. They don't have a lot of people that they can actually look up to. Mm -hmm. And the people that they are looking up to, they shouldn't be looking up to them. Right. You know, but they do anyway. Right. But, uh, yeah, he, 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 was a, he was a spiritual man. Mm -hmm. um, in mm -hmm. fact, I remember when we uh, had prayer together, mm -hmm. and, um, and I, um, he got on his knees to pray, and I got on my knees down with, with him. Mm -hmm. And it was like when we got down, when he got down, mm -hmm. it was like the Holy Ghost came like a cool breeze. Mm -hmm. It felt so, I wish mm -hmm. I could feel that now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, that particular, yeah. Yeah. it felt so good. Mm -hmm. It mm -hmm. felt so good. Mm -hmm. It was such a beautiful experience. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, another experience we had where um, he, uh, he laid both hands on me because Satan was fighting me so viciously. Mm -hmm. And he laid hands on me, mm -hmm. put his hands on my shoulders. Mm -hmm. And when he put his hands on me, the Spirit of God moved on me. And see, you, you, uh, you can't fake the Spirit of God, right. the real Spirit of God, right. Right. you know. Right. Um, my advice, and I know you may not be asking me this, yeah. but my advice to those this waiting on the Spirit to move on them, mm -hmm. wait for the Spirit to move you, because mm -hmm. He will do it. Yeah. He don't need no help. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> he can do it. He knows how to do, do it. it. Right. You know, so that particular 
Man, mm. he laid hands on me and I could feel God mm. just move on me, mm. you know, so, mm. you know, and mm. I could feel the power of God in his hands. Mm. <laughs> mm. Yeah. I could feel the power of God in his hands. So he was a wonderful person. Mm -hmm. Yeah, he was a wonderful person. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, I think I had the opportunity to meet him um, a little bit before um, he departed. Um, but speaking of his departure, um, while we're at Briar Road, I believe, yeah. and is where he actually passed. Right. Um, I, if you can, can you go back to the day of the day of his uh, of his uh, departure, yeah. and uh, from your perspective, describe that day. You know, going to church and how right. everything transpired in terms of his passing from your perspective. Right. So that night. Um, Mm -hmm. I believe it was a Thursday night. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. Everything was normal. We went to church yeah. that evening. Um, he, he seemed fine. Yeah. He seemed in great physical condition because he was in great shape for, as far as what I could see. Uh, everything was good. Mm -hmm. You know, it was walking, talking. Um, mm -hmm. He wasn't short of breath or anything like that. Mm -hmm. um, he seemed like he was in fine physical condition. So I believe it was that night, mm -hmm. I believe, um, I found out, you know, that he had passed. And it was unbelievable because I was just with him. I was with him coming home from church. You know, he walking, talking, seemed to be no problem. You know, you couldn't detect anything where you could say, uh-oh, there's something wrong. You know, there's something wrong, there's something not right, mm -hmm. something is off. There was none of that, there was no indication. And when I found out that he had passed, it was total shock, total surprise. You know, where I, I where you wouldn't, I could never think that that night you were gonna pass. Mm -hmm. You know, there was no way that, you know, something like that, that drastic. You know what happened, mm. so that, that was that was a total um, that was a total shock. Yeah. When did yeah. you when did you actually learn of his passing? Um, did somebody give you a call that night yeah, or the somebody next day? Called. Uh, I, I I can't exactly remember. I, I'm mm. I'm going to say I think it was a phone call. Mm. I think it was. Mm. Mm. If not, then I just can't you know yeah. can't recollect exactly. But when I found out, it was a total shock. Yeah. Yeah. It was. Yeah, yeah. It was something. It was really something. Yeah, I, I actually, I remember the time myself when he actually, I think I got a call early in the morning, about three o'clock um, mm -hmm. from Elder King. Okay. And I was absolutely shocked. Right. Absolutely right. shocked because like yourself, I had spoken to him that night mm -hmm. and I asked him how he was doing. He said he was doing quite well and uh, he felt good. Right. And by the time three o'clock came, he was gone. Gone, yeah. yeah. So it may have been the next day yeah. that where I but yeah. got the information. But yeah. when I got it, it, it was, yeah. wow. Mm. Yeah, it was amazing. It was really something. Mm. Well, to tell us, Steve, c can you describe um, a little bit more about what your relationship is with Pastor now? Okay. Versus back then. Right. Um, how, how would you characterize it? Okay, so um, for one thing, I see mm -hmm. so much um, spiritual growth mm -hmm. in him, yeah. you know, as well as myself. Mm -hmm. But um, his, the amount of wisdom that God had blessed him to have and knowledge and understanding, mm -hmm. um, I think it amazes me more now. Mm -hmm. And I always asked him. I said, how are, you, how are you doing this? I know how he's doing it. <laughs> right. But when you get a sense of really the magnitude of the work yeah. and what it was then mm -hmm. versus now, yeah. uh, it's hard to put into words because the church has grown so much mm -hmm. and so many, many more people have been added, you know, to yeah. the work. And, you know, mm -hmm. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at them and I'm like, you got a big family. Seven kids yeah. and a wife. Yeah, 
That's a big family. That's a big family. <laughs> you know, and then you've got all these churches, all these people, you know. Mm -hmm. And it's like everybody is, 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 you know, well, they want you to be here and they mm -hmm. want you to come. And they want, so, and I don't think I'm ever going to stop asking them, <laughs> how are you doing this? Yep. Because it's, it, it, the work is massive, mm -hmm. you know. And I look at his humility. Mm -hmm. You know, a lot of times people get the wrong idea because of the way God blesses him to preach. Mm -hmm. And they think he's proud and uplifted. And mm -hmm. it's just the opposite, you know. But yeah. people wouldn't believe that because they don't know him. Yeah. Yeah. So being that we're so, you know, we're so close, yeah. I get a chance to see him, yeah. you know, see him when he's not feeling well. Right. You know, see him when he's in pain. See him when he don't feel like going. Yeah. Hallelujah! Yeah. Hallelujah! And God blesses him. Yeah. Still go. Blesses him and he still, still goes. goes. Yeah. Yeah. He still goes. Mm. And um, man, yeah. to have a friend yeah. Yeah. as a real man of yeah, God. God. Yeah. What, 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 what price can you put on that? Mm. What, yeah. what type of money price could you put on that? There is none. There is none. There is none. You know, and for me to know a real man of God, yeah. a real apostle, mm -hmm. to know somebody like that, mm. and I'm, I'm nothing. Mm -hmm. And for me to know that, that's a blessing. It's a blessing. It's a great blessing. That's Steve. a blessing. But yeah. I don't deserve it. Yeah. yeah. I don't deserve it. Yeah. It's definitely a blessing to you. I mean, it's a blessing. Yeah. It's just that you've had the opportunity to interact with him so closely. Yeah. Many people, if not any other people, not, people are not going to have that experience that you have. Right. So. Right. I uh, can't take that for granted. No. Uh, yeah. There's no way you could take that for granted. You. Yeah. you you can't, you, it's something you, you can't push it off. Um, you have to value it. Yeah. You have to value it yeah. that the Lord would allow somebody to mm. be in that type of position. Mm. Yeah. And you, you can't earn it. Right. You know what? I mean, um, I'm, I'm striving, but I got a long way to go. Mm -hmm. Yeah. <laughs> And for, for, for the Lord yeah. to put me with him. Yeah. It's a blessing. It's a blessing. Yeah. Because I don't deserve it. Yeah. Hallelujah. I don't deserve yeah, it. Fully understand, Steve. Fully understand. Yeah. Fully understand. It's something you have to treasure. Yes. Because the selection was made by God and not us. Right. Yeah. Right. It's wonderful. Yeah. So uh, mm. I'm, I'm just so thankful. You know, mm -hmm. I'm so thankful for what the Lord have done. And the thing about it is, it's not over. <laughs> it's not over. By no means. You know, it's so much more mm -hmm. that God has shown him yeah. to yeah. yet to come to pass. Yeah. And if somebody may ask, well, how do you know it's going to come to pass? Well, look what already has happened. Yeah. Look what already has happened. Yeah. And yeah. Uh, that's just proof God is faithful. Yeah. Absolutely. God is faithful. Absolutely. Yeah. Do you remember the first time Pastor put you up to, to teach? And uh, what was going through your mind at that time? Yeah. Because uh, most people may not understand or know you because most people see you only reading the scriptures. Right. They may not realize that you also, right, you're right. also a minister and you also teach. Right, right. Um, when was the first time? So that remember? particular time, um, I, I remember... One of the main things I remember is after it was over. Mm. And uh, after that particular service was over, my very first time, and I went to him and I, uh, and I told him, um, I thought I was going to be more dynamic. <laughs> you know, I thought yeah. that I was going to be more, uh, more outgoing, and, you know, but it just, it just didn't happen. Mm -hmm. So I had to learn. I had to grow. I had to develop. Yeah. And... Uh, Wow, teaching is so much, it's a whole different thing than reading. Mm -hmm. You know, it's, it, it, yeah. it's a different, it, it's a different level. Yeah. Um, it's a different experience. Yeah. And um, mm. I value that. I mean, <laughs> you know, uh, that was the very first time. It, you know, and, and I also remember, um, mm -hmm. I, I, I believe I, Thing, I believe he told me to, to 
preach, you know, word and spirit and, yeah. you know, yeah. just stick. Yeah. And I had gotten a little bit far farther than what he told me because uh -huh. I started talking about Jesus being the son, going mm -hmm. to that. Yes. And, you know, he was saying, you know, don't, <laughs> you know, <laughs> it's my first time. Right, right. You know, so right. uh, mm -hmm. I have learned how to, you know, stick with what you know. Yeah. Don't yeah. go out into uh, areas that even if you know what you're talking about, yeah. you have to be able to relay that to people right. so the people can understand. Right. Because if the people don't understand and you're the only one that understand, you're not benefiting the congregation. Exactly. So I stick with what I know yeah. in those confines. Mm -hmm. um, God has blessed me to be able to learn from what, you know, from what he's preaching and teaching. Mm -hmm. And I stick with that. Wonderful. Stick with that. Okay. I don't try to go in Ezekiel and all these other, yeah. you know, books that are so deep. deep. I, you know, I yeah. stick with what I know. Yeah, yeah. Stick with what I know. And that's so. the safest route. Yes. The safest route to go. Yeah. Yeah. I thank God for Pastor Jens because, as you can see, the description of many of the things you've talked about and the way he guides everybody. Right. It's a fatherly spirit, right? Right, so right. Being right. a father and trying to guide the child yeah, to yeah. go the right way because the child doesn't know. Right. And the child has zeal to do a whole lot. Right. right? Just like just like he he would uh mm -hmm. my, my my reading was at such as oh man, I was so full of zeal. Mm -hmm. You know, and not only that, I also wanted to be like Bishop Johnson's reader. Mm. Brother Davis, because mm. he was you're on point with yeah. a you know. Yeah. You know, so, you know, he would tell me, just, you know, just, you know, <laughs> take it, you know, do, let God deal with you the way God deal, wants to deal with you. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. And, yeah. Uh, you know, just to de depend on the spirit and mm -hmm. yeah, there's so many things he have told me. Yeah. Um, yeah. That mm -hmm. have been such excellent advice. Mm -hmm. Um you know, he would tell me to get in, get into my reading and, and, mm. and how the spirit would move. Mm. Oh, man, it's so much. Mm. Mm. <laughs> so much. Yeah, it's wonderful. That, uh, yeah. you know, mm. and I'm glad that he interacts with me. Mm -hmm. Even though he's Pastor Jennings, yeah. he interacts with me like he's not Pastor Jennings, like right. he's Brother Jennings. Right. Like, you know, it, it, and, and it, which, which is a beautiful thing. You know, he always talks to me from a, uh, perspective of um, like he's not better than you know he al always always stays on the level always mm -hmm. uh, gives such good advice from a brotherly and a fatherly mm -hmm. point of view mm -hmm. and uh, I always keep him oh, that's Pastor Jennings yeah. you know I, I, I never let him get out of place mm -hmm. in my mind right you know, I always right. keep that place, mm -hmm. and it, 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 it's a beautiful relationship. Yeah, yeah. You know, it's a beautiful thing to be able to talk to somebody that spiritually is over you, mm -hmm. but can talk to you like a brother, mm -hmm. like a friend, mm -hmm. you know, mm -hmm. and um, that's a wonderful thing. Yeah, we see it, and I'm sure the audience sees it quite often. Right. If pastor is actually given a description of something, mm -hmm. he may pick on you, right? Right, Or right. say something about you or something like that. But you can see the, um, it's sort of the camaraderie right. and the, the fatherly lift and, and the, the good relationship between You're both right. of right. you, which yeah. is, it's obvious to people. Right. Um, so it's good to hear you actually say that so people can actually can hear, actually, hear yeah. it for themselves. Yeah. Um, because I, 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 I know there were, there were maybe a few people. Mm -hmm. One, one, I believe it was one sister was talking about passive picking on me. Yeah. And I'm like, every, every, everything's all right. <laughs> everything's all right. You know. Yeah. Uh, I, in fact, I, and see, it's so much I could tell you. Yeah. Um, when pastor talks, and says out loud mm -hmm. about me, oh, he, he was a three God man. He yeah. was a trinity. He was this and he was that. Yeah. That is a lesson right there yeah. because that lets you know how far God can bring you yeah. from what you used to believe to now what you believe now. So that all of that, if people would look at things in the right perspective, you know, they could get a they could learn a lot. Just yeah. about, you know, yeah. our uh, relationship, well, 
while we're in the pulpit. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. That's wonderful, Steve. That's wonderful. Yeah. That's wonderful. Um, like I asked most of the guests on, on our program, um, uh, people are going to watch this and they're going to see you. Is there anything that you would want them to know um, that you think they may be curious about other than the things we've talked about? Or, okay. if you prefer, are there any you know, words of wisdom you'd want to give them in terms of what they should do or their perception of the, the preaching of Pastor Jennings and the interaction you have with him? Is there anything you'd want them to know in okay. order to get rid of you know, misconceptions? Right. So one of the uh, misconceptions that people have is when pastor does talk about me <laughs> and talk about different things about me, right. nobody has to get on edge and say, oh, he, he don't like William yeah. or he's against William or yeah. he's looking down on William. Or he's right. belittling William. It's none of that. Yeah. It's none of that. It's just that we have such a relationship until he can talk to me like that mm -hmm. and I don't get offended. Yeah. You know, he and he's not trying to offend me. Right. You right. know, right. Yeah, it's just something that we have that I'm glad we have. Yeah. You know, because a lot of, especially when it comes to men, mm -hmm. a lot of times, especially in the church, mm -hmm. a lot of times men don't like men don't like to be talked to, mm -hmm. uh, in maybe in a certain way. Mm -hmm. When Pastor talks to, to me about or you know, t tells the audience I was in the Trinity and I was three gods and he may talk about my driving and whatnot. Mm -hmm. People don't have to get on edge of that. Mm -hmm. They don't have to worry about that. Me and Pastor's good. <laughs> We're good. Right. Yeah, yeah. I wouldn't trade our friendship. Yeah. No, yeah. I'm not trading that. Yeah. No yeah. way. For anything. No, for yeah. anything. Yeah. Right, because yeah. this man has stuck with me through mm -hmm. thick and thin through my lows, and I've had some lows. <laughs> I've had some lows, sure. and I'm sure there's more lows coming. <laughs> but uh, yeah, he's yeah. Uh, he's stuck with me, and he's helped me, and yeah. you know, he's been right there, and you know, mm. praying for me, and yeah. there's yeah. so many areas where yeah. he had been really yeah. a, a faithful friend, yeah. Yeah. a real yeah. friend. Yeah. Yeah. So people don't have to worry. Yeah. You know, they don't have to worry. They don't have to think, oh, pastor don't like him. And, you know, they don't yeah. have to worry about that. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, the man loves me. I love him. Wonderful. You know, yeah. And it's the right type of love. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> You've got to put that out put there because, you know, you know, we've right. got this other stuff That's going on. Exactly. So, exactly. Um, yeah, we're, we're, we're good. Wonderful. Wonderful. We're good. Not only that, yeah. may I add all this also. Okay. Satan, try, he tries to attack that. Mm. He tries to attack that. Mm -hmm. So I... I know what we got is of God. Yes. Anytime the devil is on it. Yeah. Yeah. The devil is on it. That's so true. So yeah. I want to put that out there too. Words of wisdom. Yeah. Um, if you run up on a real man of God and we got one here, yeah. come on down to the church. Yeah. Let yeah. the man preach to you. Yeah. Somebody may say, well, I don't like the way he sound. Mm -hmm. All right, let's get over that. Yeah. Because what he's saying is true. Yeah. What he's saying is true. God makes him preach so forcefully mm -hmm. because he's going up against the world. He's going up against carnal minds. Mm -hmm. He's going up against rich minds. Mm -hmm. He's going up against, and when I say rich minds, I mean rich as far as uh, wealth money-wise. Mm -hmm. He's going up against that attitude. Mm -hmm. He's going up against the attitudes of, well, I don't like you anyway. I wish you were dead. He's going mm -hmm. up against all of that. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So you can't come, oh, well, well, today, folks, God loves you. <laughs> God loves you. Yes, he does. <laughs> Who's that going to change? Exactly, exactly. Who is that going to draw God to? Exactly, exactly. One scripture says how forcible the right words. Yeah. So the Spirit makes him preach with force. Yep. It sounds harsh because it's rough. Yep. It's the words of God. And God is love, mm -hmm. but God knows how to speak rough, Mm -hmm. And he knows how to speak in another manner. Mm -hmm. God knows how to touch the individual. That's mm -hmm. the purpose of the scriptures mm -hmm. being preached mm -hmm. so that the people can be reached. Mm -hmm. And if it come rough, did it reach you? That, that's the next question. Mm -hmm. Did it reach you? Yep. Mm -hmm. So listen at the word while it's being preached. Don't yeah. pay attention to how he sounds because mm -hmm. he's going to sound like that. Mm -hmm. That's not changing. Right. And it's going to get more forceful yeah. <laughs> because the world is getting more wicked. That's exactly right. And Satan is not coming timid and nice. No. 
Satan is coming forcefully, yeah. and he knows how to come forcefully deceptive in deception. Mm -hmm. He can come nice too, yeah. but forceful. Yeah. Yeah. So pay attention. Get down to the church. Get a chance to hear the man preach. Then the scripture says, consider what I say, mm -hmm. and then the Lord will come along and give you understanding mm -hmm. in all things. Yeah. You can't ask for no more than that. So, Excellent, Brother Steve. We Excellent. got a good thing going on, Dan. Absolutely. Um, <laughs> we got a good thing going on. No need to convince me. <laughs> uh, yeah, I know, I know. <laughs> yeah. No, but we, we, certainly, uh, we certainly thank you for your time, Brother Steve. Oh, sure. Yeah, this is, uh, this is very important um, that people hear and see you right. other than at the time of when you're reading. Right. And um, we, we thank you for your time. And as with all our guests on the program, Mm -hmm. Our purpose is to get people to see the truth of what's happening here right? and to have to use even this program to draw people to him right, right. Um, so that they can be right and, and, and get themselves saved before they leave this life. Yes. So we thank you for your time always, Steve. Okay. Thank uh, you. Pray thank for you, us as always. Will do. And uh, continue to, to, to do. Our yep. <laughs> yeah. And to our viewers, we want to say uh, certainly thank you for watching this interview with Brother Steve Williams. Again, he's the reader for Pastor Jennings, and uh, stay tuned for the next edition of This the Truth of God Insider. like to advertise on the TOG Insider, please call Cindy Rawlings at 252-341-9358. Once again, for advertising on the TOG Insider, call Cindy Rawlings at 252-341-9358.